Hey friends, it's Mr. Walker here. Thank you for joining me for a math lesson with Mr. Walker. I know, I know what you're thinking. Where's Mrs. Walker? She's totally awesome. I don't want this Mr. Walker guy. What's going on here? And you know what? You're right. Mrs. Walker is really awesome, which is why she's busy getting ready for a uh, another award ceremony that she's been invited to for being a super awesome teacher. So she's getting all her stuff uh, stuff ready and getting her uh, speech prepped and all that kind of stuff. So so I'm filling in for her today, and um. I'll do my best I can to uh, to keep up to her level of awesomeness. So uh, we'll see what we can do. But I was actually hoping you guys would you guys would help me out with something today because uh, in addition to her having this award ceremony, I have to be there, be supportive, and all that kind of stuff, right? And and she threw this these clothes at me, and she told me I gotta get I gotta get dressed up and, and get all fancy. And as you can tell from my my t-shirt and jeans here, I'm I'm not the fanciest guy in the world, right? So I have a I have a I have a tie here that I gotta put on and some like fancy looking shirt and like and like a jacket and and all this kind of stuff. So um, you know I was, I was trying to figure out the right way to put things on and I mean I know the tie is important so maybe maybe I gotta put the, the tie on first I'm thinking right and then you know, this this thing is here this, this jacket right maybe put this on okay so that is looking good so far I guess and then. I guess this shirt has to go over the top here, like so. Maybe it, that doesn't. That's not feeling. That's not feeling quite right. So maybe, uh, maybe it's the the tie, then the shirt, then the, you know. I I don't know. I'm I, I'm kind of at a loss already here. This is this is a lot of work. So um. Uh, let's do this. Let's take a break. Let's do some math instead. Kind of de-stress a little bit, right? Math is fun. Get us, get us thinking some math, and then maybe we can come back at the end and revisit this and see if you guys can help me, help me get dressed for this thing, this award ceremony for Mrs. Walker. So uh, we're gonna do some math. So uh, you don't need much today. Maybe just something to write on, something to write with, so you can follow along with me. And uh, once you have those things gathered up, you know, pause the video if you need to get those things. Once you have them gathered up, go ahead and uh, click play again, and uh, we'll start going. And we'll uh, we'll practice a little bit of math together. All right, guys, so let's start by taking a look at a word problem here, okay? I have a word problem up here, and it says, Mr. Walker has two cartons of s with six eggs in each carton, okay? Two cartons with six eggs in each carton, and as I open the carton, right, I drop two eggs. It's happened to all of us before, right? It's a bummer. It's all right. Don't cry over spilled eggs, as they say. Um, so how many unbroken eggs does Mr. Walker have left? So I have these two cartons, six eggs in each carton. Let's go ahead and underline some of this important information here. So again, we had two cartons and six eggs in each carton, right? Okay, I got a feeling that's probably gonna be important. And I, as I open it, I dropped two eggs. It means like I lost two eggs, right? So how many unbroken eggs does Mr. Walker have left? Well, if I was gonna think about this, first of all, I gotta find out how many eggs I was starting with, right? So I was starting with two cartons, six eggs in each carton. Well, I could do multiplication to help me find that, right? So I have two cartons times six, two times six, there's six eggs in each carton. I'm gonna do that two times. That's gonna give me a total of 12. So I started out with 12 eggs, that's awesome. Then I dropped two of them, bummer, right? So I had those 12 eggs, I dropped two of them. So now that's gonna leave me with 10 eggs, okay? So I have 10 eggs left. Um, make omelets or pancakes or whatever it is I'm making. And anyway, I got tw uh, 10 eggs left, so that's cool. All right, so in this problem here, we're dealing with two equations, right? Two equations, basically. All right, two times six, and then 12 minus two. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna draw a picture here to help me kind of illustrate this a little bit. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. That's like the one carton of eggs, right? And if I put six more there, one, Two, three, four, five, six. There's my two cartons of six eggs. So it's easy enough, right? And then uh, I'm gonna just cross out two of these because those will represent the two that I dropped, right? So in this picture, in this illustration, I was able to kind of sum up all the steps I took in, into like one picture, right? So how do you think, or do you think there's a way that we can include all of this information here, these these two equations or this illustration that I drew? Is there a way that we can combine this into into one like equation all together, like one, one sentence, one number sentence equation that explains what happened here. Think about that for a second, pause the video, think about it, can you write this in one equation and what might that look like? 
awesome guys, there's some good thinking out there. So let's kind of think of it this way. What if I wrote something like two times six minus two equals 10, right? Those are the steps I, fo I, I followed when I was solving this problem. I did two times six to get to 12 and then I subtracted two and that gave me 10, right? And that my picture il illustrates that as well up there. So let's go ahead and check to make sure that this equation actually works, what we wrote actually works. Now, do you think I need to multiply first or subtract first or do you think it matters? Interesting, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna, since multiplication is written first and that's what we did first the first time, I think I'm gonna multiply first, all right? Uh, so I would do two, uh, two times six to get 12 and then 12 minus two would give me 10, awesome. Do you think the order matters though? Do you think it matters if I do subtraction first? Well, let's take a look and see. If I did six minus two, well that would give me eight. So then I would have my two times eight, which would give me 16. Interesting, a little bit different of an answer this time. So I guess it really kind of does matter what order that we do steps in a problem and if we want to get the correct answer, right? And the cool thing is we can use uh, certain symbols to help us determine what it is we need to do first in certain equations that you need to do in a certain order. And we can use something that's called parentheses. Parentheses. Now you've probably heard that before. You've probably seen it a lot more in like reading and writing and things like that. But we can use parentheses in math too, which is pretty cool. So parentheses are um, symbols that we use to denote in math to show in math what steps need to be completed first, okay? So if I were to use parentheses in this problem, for example, I'm gonna wanna put them around the two and the six, and that's gonna tell everybody, hey, look, you gotta multiply these two numbers first, and then you can do whatever's next, okay? So in this case, I wanna multiply first to get that 12, and then subtract the two, and that will give me 10, which is the correct answer. If I were to do the subtraction first, I'm not gonna get the right answer. So that's why we need those parentheses to help us out with that. All right, let's take a look at these two equations real quick. We have four plus two equals six, and then six times six equals 36. So we have these two equations, and if we wanted to, we could combine them into one equation, but we're gonna to wanna to make sure that we follow the steps in the right order in order to, to get the right answer, right? So if I were going to combine these, I could say four plus two times six, because four plus two would give me six, and then six times six would give me 36, right? But I have to make sure I do this in the right order, because if I don't, if I do two times six first, I'm gonna get 12. Two times six is 12, across that out, plus the four, 12 plus four, well, that's gonna give me 16. So that's not gonna be the right answer. My answer I need is 36. So again, if I write this equation like this, like four times two, or four plus two, to get six and then six times six to get 36, I wanna make sure that I do that four plus two first and then multiply it by six. So I'm gonna take those parentheses and put them around the four plus two. That's gonna tell me four plus two first, get six, then multiply that by six to get 36, okay? Parentheses really help out in that order, right? The order of operations is what we call it and we'll, we'll get to that as we go further into third grade and even into fourth grade. All right, so let's take a look at just one more example real quick. And we have this one of 25 minus 10 divided by five. It's gonna equal three. So if we're looking at this, this one already has parentheses in it, which is great. So that means I'm going to do the subtraction first, the 25 minus 10. We're gonna do that first. So 25 minus 10, well, that's gonna give us 15. And 15 divided by five, well, it's gonna give us three. All right, so that's easy enough, but, but what would happen if we moved those parentheses. So let's see. I'm gonna take these parentheses out. I'm gonna fix my zero. And then I'm gonna put them here. Are we still gonna get three? I mean, the numbers didn't change. My symbols didn't change. Nothing changed. Should I still get three? Go ahead, pause the video. Think about that for a second. Let me know, what do you think? Am I still gonna get three is my answer if I just move the parentheses around and leave everything else the same. You might think so, but no, it's not, gonna, it's not gonna be the same answer because I'm not following the steps in the same way. So let's take a look, let's work it out real quick and see what we get. If I take 10 divided by five, 10 divided by five is gonna give me two. Okay, so this part's done, so now I just have 25 
minus 2. 25 minus 2, that's 23. That's not the same answer, right? So it's not going to work out the same if I don't have the parentheses in the, in the right spot that they need to, in whatever step I need to do first, okay? All right, so what I'm starting to realize is, is that in math and, and in, even in real life, obviously, there's, there's steps that you have to follow. There's things that you have to do first. And in math, what's nice is when we're looking at equations that have more than one operation in them, parentheses are really going to tell us what it is we need to do first. Okay, what well, we need to do first and then be able to move on to the next steps. Now, if I had those same parentheses around my, my jacket and tie and shirt, that might help me get dressed a little bit. So I'm going to go... Um, search on YouTube and maybe see if I can find some ways on how to get dressed and, and look like a proper gentleman. Um, but I want you guys to keep practicing with using parentheses in math and distinguishing how the parentheses are going to help us uh, determine what we need to do first in a math problem and where we need to put the parentheses if we're writing an equation um, and we want things to be done in a certain order. So thank you guys for playing along with me today. Thank you for helping me with my equations and sort of helping me get dressed. I'm going to figure out the rest of this. You guys have a great rest of your day, and we'll talk to you soon.